I'm here at the Pollenskill Viaduct in northern New Jersey. It was once the world's largest reinforced concrete structure, built as part of the world's first high-speed railroad line. But why is it sitting here abandoned in the middle of the woods? What's its future? I'm Knowles. I'm here to explore and explain. Hey everybody. This is a different sort of setting for me. Obviously I'm not in my room and I'm not even in Pittsburgh. So um, basically my idea with this is just to explain while I explore and uh, I'm just going to kind of mash together the clips that I take today and hope it turns out well. So bear with me through the, the possible frostbite and the bad camera angles and uh, let's have some fun exploring this bridge in New Jersey. Just so you can get a sense of where we are here, I've included this neat little map. I also wanted to say that the last train to run across this line was in 1979. The tracks were torn up in 1984, and since 2001, the state of New Jersey has owned this entire line. So basically, the reason this railroad bridge and this railroad line exists at all is because the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad wanted a straighter, more direct route from New York City to Scranton and beyond, and this is the first step in that plan. They straightened out their main line from uh, New York City, like I said, to Scranton across northern New Jersey, and they reduced the curves in the line, they reduced all grade crossings, they had uh, huge fills and huge cuts, and then of course these two huge bridges as well, and it allowed trains to travel up to 70 miles an hour along this line, which was unprecedented. This was in 1908, by the way. So one of the coolest features on this bridge are these old maintenance manholes that just appear. I guess they used to be in the middle of the tracks, but now they're kind of in the middle of the, the whole swath that's covered in snow today. And I saw a guy uh, on YouTube come in here and explore these. It's like a little crawl space. So I'm going down because I don't want to drop my boat again in the snow. Okay, an update on the manholes. We elected not to go down because they're filled with ice and I didn't feel like dying for a YouTube video. But I think we're gonna head over to the other bridge that's about four miles down the line and it crosses the Delaware River. That should give us some really cool views and I can explain a little bit more of the history of this really cool line to you guys when we're over there. We're coming down the other side of the bridge because the side we came up was pretty steep and somebody's installed a little rope system over here. So if you wanna watch me flail around, I'm, I'm going down. Pocket knife. Take this. All right, good news. We found another way to get into these little maintenance compartments. But do you want to be in the? Is that okay if you're in the, the back of the? Somebody has installed a rope ladder here on the side of one of these columns. And it looks pretty rickety, but I'm going to try it out anyway. Okay, another update. This is actually not a flat surface. This is uh, goes down to an angle for some reason, but you can see some of these maintenance passageways that I was trying to get to, uh, but the cold and the ice prevented me from doing that. But uh, this is still a pretty cool place. I'd love to come back when it's a little warmer and really check some of these out. So after quite a few trials and tribulations, we made our way over to the Delaware River Viaduct part. It's only four trail miles, but it's pretty cold, so we didn't feel like walking four miles through some uh, overgrown trail uh, in this kind of weather, but we ended up seeing some of the water gap, and now we find our way onto this bridge. It looks like there's another manhole and probably a similar maintenance system as there is on the other bridge. Ooh, it's not quite the same. Oh God. There used to be a ladder there. Yeah. Woof. So from 1911 to 1960, Lackawanna Railroad trains would have run at about 70 miles per hour over both this bridge and the other bridge that we were at earlier. And it's considered by some historians to be the first high-speed railroad 
uh, simply for that fact that they could run so fast and that's because there was no grade crossings and there were so few curves and the grade was so uh, low compared to the line that they had bypassed. And that's why it's a perfect candidate for high-speed rail again in the future. Which brings me to my next point, and that is the possibility of Amtrak running along this line in the not-so-far future, maybe within the next decade or so. Talk about that in a bit. So we've come across a few of these manholes. This bridge is a little different, uh, at least from what we can tell, because these manholes only appear over the column sections instead of in the middle of arches, like on the Pollens Kill. I don't want to go down any of these at all. That ladder looks very not safe, and it starts about two feet down the hole, and it's just pitch black, so that doesn't look like a good time. Uh, I do thank you guys for watching, but I'm not gonna do that for views, so. Maybe next time, maybe when it's warmer and I can see the bottom or something, I don't know. I would like to come back here when there's not half a foot of snow on the ground. You can see the Delaware water gap up this way. I think that's just an awesome view. And uh, as I was alluding to earlier, Amtrak trains might soon be in this view in the next decade or so. So in 2023, there was 62 corridors considered by the FRA for uh, the Federal Railroad Administration for um, uh, adding high-speed rail service or regular rail service or basically just pumping money in to existing service. And I think it's heading down that way instead. So we're a little further east now, over by Andover, and we're driving towards the Pequist Fill, which is another huge section of the cutoff. And that ridge that you see in the background is not natural at all. It's in fact entirely man-made. It's the same cutoff as we were on earlier. And um, as far as I know, it's one of the largest fills for any railroad project anywhere. It required over six million cubic yards of fill material. and. I just think this is interesting. Usually when you're doing a cut and fill, you want to even out the amount of rock that you dig up in cuts and that you put down in fills. But this was so large that it stretches across this entire valley that the railroad actually ended up buying over 700 acres of farmland and digging down 20 feet uh, in all of that just to get the dirt needed to fill in this, this fill. And you can actually see this from space, which is pretty interesting, I think. But I'll let you enjoy the view now. That, that railroad line that's over there, there's a tunnel that it went underneath this railroad, but um, it looks like you can't get to it. It's on that company's property. Yeah. Your destination is on the right. That has to be the jankiest looking landscaping. Just burn it. <laughs> 
looks awful. Yeah, I've definitely seen better bamboo oh, than that. One, two, that. three, four dough. Four dough. Huh. Trees back there. So now we're standing here overlooking this enormous rock cut next to the Roseville Tunnel which is currently being re-excavated by New Jersey Transit in an effort to reopen the line between Port Morris Junction and Andover. I'm now here in Nicholson, PA, at the site of the Tonkanic Creek Viaduct, in which the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad beat their own record for the world's largest reinforced concrete structure just a few years after the Pollens Kill and the Delaware River Viaducts were completed. I just thought you guys would like to see this. I'm going to go over to another part of town and get some other shots so you can see the uh, true scale of just how incredibly large this bridge is. I'm over here in the cemetery now in Nicholson and I think you get a better sense of just how massive this is and how much it dominates the landscape of the town. This is basically what the Pollens Kill and Delaware River viaducts would look like if they were, you know, 100 feet taller and uh, twice the, the length and over a town, I suppose. Really, the only similarity is the architecture. Now, it wouldn't be a Knowles Explores and Explains video without some historic imagery, would it? So I've included some so everybody can get their fill. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm blown away with the attention my channel has received so far. It's been much more than I anticipated, and I, I'm so thankful. Uh, I know this video is different than my other videos. I wanted to mix it up a little bit, try something new. So thank you for sticking with me, and it would mean so much if you liked and commented and subscribed. I did want to shout out two channels while I'm here, uh, Alan Fisher and the Lackawanna Cutoff channel. They're what led me to find this thing in the first place, and I've linked them down below, along with my sources, like usual. Once again, means a lot that you've watched this, and I'll see you next time.